what's your backstory and how did you get into real estate and, and what took you from where you were to where you are today? Yeah. You know, I started out in the early 2000s, Jay. And uh, back then, as you probably well know, there was not a lot of education available. Uh, I don't think I even had, uh, I think there might have been one REI club. There surely weren't, weren't meetups. And all the data and information that's readily available to us today, uh, you had to go down to the courthouse if you wanted to get anything. And I think even back then, the foreclosure listing service, I was in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I came in a uh, you had to print it off on a piece of paper. So it was really on a, you know, print it out. So it was really, really uh, inefficient and um, very time consuming to say the least. You know, I, and I got, I started out doing, you know, low end fix and flips because I didn't know really anything else. No one was there to teach me. And uh, I got to, the, you know, when the crash hit in 2007, 2008, nine, whatever, wherever you decide it starts, uh, I was very fortunate to get out fairly unscathed. Uh, and then I took a little bit of time off. And when I came back in around 2010, I, there was plenty of information uh, available now. There was There's educators and influencers and uh, their social media was starting to become more prevalent and just data was just so much more readily available. And I, But I knew that I wanted to be in real estate uh, because it was fun, first of all, even though I had a little bit of a setback. But um, I knew that's really the, the place to go to generate wealth. And I wasn't sure how I was going to do it and uh, and who I was going to follow and and listen to, because now I was under the mindset I was going to go back to really square one and really make a determination on what the best fit was moving forward after we came out of the, the crash. And I started out wholesaling. And because that made the most sense to me uh, for a lot of different reasons, low cost of entry, uh, uh, very doable, late, especially back in, in 2010, 2008. Um, and I started wholesaling and, uh, one of the very first deals that I, that I got uh, was from, uh, a seller that called me and she had a property for sale. And, um, I went out and I looked at it. I called somebody that I had seen on a sign and they said, I asked them, was a Vende Casa sign? I'll just say what it was. And I knew what Vende Casa was. I'm from Texas or I live in Texas from Arizona. And I go, I know what that means. Let me call them and see if they may know somebody that would want to buy a house. And so I called them and I, she answered the phone and she says, hola. And I said, hey, hello, do you speak English? And she goes, yeah, I speak English. I go, hey, I got this, I got this house for sale. Now, now understand, Jay, I did not have it under contract. I did not have it even, all I did was drive by it and go, oh, okay, that's what a $25,000 house looked like, you know, 10 years or 15 years ago now in that market. Uh, that same house today is, you know, well over $100,000, but that's not the point. I say, I have a house for sale and um, I'm looking to sell it. And I go, um, would you be interested? And she goes, um, what's the address? And I gave her the address. I go, hey, you can't go inside though, because there's tenants in there and the seller said, I can't, I don't want anybody disturbing the tenants because they don't even know I'm selling it. So I go and I call her and she goes, I give her the information and I didn't think of anything. She goes, what do you want for it? I did everything wrong, Jay. I did absolutely everything wrong. I said $35,000 thinking, well, if I get it for 25, maybe it's going to make a little money. Had no idea even what I was really, really doing at the time. I'm literally driving home in less than 30 minutes after I had uh, made that phone call. She calls me back and says, Hey, Mr. Nick, I got buyers. They're outside the house. I'm like, oh crap, here we go. I go, don't, they can't bug, bug the, bug the tenants. And she goes, well, they're not, they're just looking around the outside. And she goes, um, she goes, since, since they can't even get inside, they go, well, you take, they want to make you an offer for $32,000. And I said, $32,000. Like I was offended. Right. It's like it's not even my house yet. And I go, well, let me see what I can do. So I called the seller back and I, told her what I would be willing to pay. Long story short, uh, we sold that. I sold that house uh, for cash uh, for $32,000. And I paid the, the, the person that, that brought me the deal. I gave her another 2000. So I made like $5,000, which and those ratios are pretty good. Not knowing what I'm doing. So I get another phone call, Jay, from the same list that I had sent out to. And this one's a little bit better of a house. And it's worth probably fifty thousand dollars, okay? And it was in better shape. And the lady was get, had a divorce; uh, she couldn't afford the payments anymore. 
and she owed $23,000, almost the same deal numbers. Why? I guess because I mailed to the same type of list, right? That makes sense. So I call Lydia up on the phone again. I go, Hey, Lydia, I got another house. And I go, do you have another buyer with $25,000 down? I go, I'm going to sell it for 50, but I'll carry back the note. And she goes, I think I do. I go, great. Well, I'll give you another $2,000. Didn't make any cash on that deal, Jay. But it, uh, and I wrote a, a stellar 5% note uh, for 20, 20 or $25,000. And it's like, now I go, man, why was I thinking back then? And that's sort of how I got into the creative deal structuring. And since that point, um, we continue to do all kinds of creative financing deals. We buy notes, we create notes, we fix notes. Uh, we help others write notes. And what I've learned from this is everything starts with the deal. And that's why I wanted to bring this up and going back to the wholesaling side, because there's a lot of wholesalers out there right now and people that want to, would like to wholesale, but I think they're missing a huge opportunity to come in and be a little bit more outside the box and create their own notes with somebody else's asset uh, that they can control. And that's really what we do. We want to learn how to control real estate, not own it, because that's exactly what the banks do. And, and so that's what we, that's what we're working on right now. So